This is Lords and Ladies, or the Aram Lily, Aram Makalatum. Lords and Ladies are shade-loving plants. You'll find them in woodlands and along hedgerows. The flowers can be seen around April and May. It's native to the UK and most of Europe. I think it's one of our more exotic looking wildflowers. The cylindrical structure in the centre is called a spadix and it bears tiny yellow flowers at the base inside. And this is all hooded by this green or sometimes purplish sheaf called a spathe. And then later in the year, after pollination, the spadix will bear a spike of bright red berries. The leaves of Lords and Ladies appear from early spring. They're arrow shaped with rounded lobes at the back. And sometimes the leaves have these purple markings on. This plant was featured in the first episode of the new Attenborough series, Wild Owls, and if you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend it. And I learned something new from that, and that is this plant produces heat from the spadix, and it releases a smell similar to rotting flesh to attract flies. So the flies go inside and get stuck, and what it does, it produces like almost like a prison with the hairs that you can see sticking out there. So the flies get stuck at the bottom here and then the male flowers release their pollen onto the flies and then eventually those hairs inside will wilt, releasing the flies which go on then to pollinate other lords and ladies, which is pretty amazing really. So that means there's probably flies in there now if those hairs are sticking out. Yeah, and actually I can see the flies moving around down there now. So they're captured at the moment. And they'll be released later on, covered in pollen. This is Marsh Marigold. Calpha palustris, also known as king cups. It's in the buttercup family. They aren't actually related to true marigolds, which are from the daisy or asteraceae family. From late March to July, these large golden flowers can be seen in damp areas like marshes and damp woodlands and next to ponds and streams. The flowers are up to around five centimetres across. They usually have five golden yellow sepals and many bright yellow stamen. The leaves are large and are heart shaped to almost completely round. Wood sorrel, Oxalis acetosula, is a lovely plant that can be seen in flower in April and May. Most guidebooks will say it grows in deciduous woodland, but I find it to be much more common in coniferous plantations like this one. Flowers have five petals, which are white or slightly pinkish, and they have purple veins and the flower grows on a very delicate stem. The leaves are trifoliate or divided into three leaflets and those leaflets are heart shaped. So these leaves often get confused with clover because they're also trifoliate but the leaflets of clover aren't heart-shaped. And also clover 
is a bit of a more robust plant. They're not quite so delicate as these. The leaves and the flowers of wood sorrel fold up at night or in bad weather. You can see they're closed up and look a bit like tents. So these ones have been in the shade all morning, so they're still closed up. If we look just over here, uh, these ones have been in the sun for a couple of hours now. And these ones are mostly opened up now. So if you can find a plantation of either pine, spruce or Douglas fir especially, then you're likely to see these in spring. And you can get quite a lot of these nice delicate flowers. The light green plant in amongst the grass here is common chickweed, Stellaria media. And you'll find this plant in most grasslands that you go to. It can be in flower pretty much any time of year. And it's got these tiny white flowers. And as with most plants in the Stellaria genus, it's got five petals that look like 10 petals because they're deeply divided. Common chickweed is a low growing spreading plant that grows in amongst grass and it's got very thin trailing stems. The leaves grow in an opposite arrangement they're oval and have a pointed tip and they're untoothed or have an entire margin. These are purple dead nettles, Lamium purpureum. They aren't related to the stinging nettles, they're from the mint family. And like I've said before, all mints have square stems with opposite leaves. It's a common plant that mostly flowers in spring, although it can sometimes be seen in flower all year round and you'll find it around field edges and around hedgerows and along roadsides. The leaves of dead nettles don't sting. And you see the upper leaves are quite a dark purplish color. The flowers are pinkish purple and tubular and they have a hooded upper lobe. Although purple dead nettles don't really look like stinging nettles, the white dead nettle, Lamium alba, really do look like nettles. If it wasn't for the hooded white flowers, then these would really look like stinging nettles. And yeah, these don't sting at all. There's also a yellow dead nettle called the yellow archangel or Lamium galeptilon. If it's got these variegated leaves, then it's actually an invasive species called Lamium galeptilon argentatum. <laughs> 